Hi everyone, I'm Jade. What we're talking about today is some pronunciation tips for British English. Some of them are tips, some of them are observations that you might be interested to know. We've got eight of them, so let's get started. Pronunciation of ED word endings. This is not specifically a, a British English issue. Um, if you, if you, if you're, blah, 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 if your preference, I don't know why I can't speak suddenly in an English pronunciation video, but that's how it is. If your preference is American English, this also applies to American English. So what I hear a lot at sort of around intermediate level, sometimes up intermediate level, if you haven't had someone to correct you, ED word endings sound like this, excited, I can't even do it because it's so unnatural for me, excited id, shout id, reminded, like it's so unnatural for me. But in fact, it, it's not like that. It doesn't sound like an ED. Um, it might sound like an id. It might sound like a T or it might sound like a D. So I've got some examples here. This word, even though it's spelled ED, makes an ID sound. It becomes excited. I'm really excited. Shouted. He shouted at me. Reminded. I reminded you to do your homework, didn't I? And yeah, so now we can talk about the ones that finish with a T sound. Finished, dripped, laughed. They don't have the ED sound. So that's an important thing to know about pronunciation. Even if it's spelt ED, it doesn't mean it sounds like that. And what about the ones that end with a D sound, a D sound? Remembered, I remembered what you said to me. Called. I called you, didn't you, didn't you hear your phone? Imagined, I imagined a better future for everyone. So with those, it's the D sound. How you know which one? Um, go with what feels most natural when you're saying the word. The main thing is don't force the ED sound at the end of the word, at the end of the word, because it's, it's that that gives you an unnatural rhythm when you're uh, speaking English. So moving on to, um, this one's an observation really, British English pronunciation. We have so many different accents in England, but one of the biggest divisions in our accents is, um, it's between the, the north of the country and the, and the south, and it's our pronunciation of um, these words, bath and laugh, as I say them. I say them in the southern pronunciation, but if I were from the north, if I were from the north of the country, I'd say bath and laugh, because they have a different accent up there. Well, they've got loads of different accents, but they they don't say they don't speak in the same way as me. So um, let's break it down into the actual sound. So if you're from the north, you say ah, but we in the south say ah. So you say bath, we say bath. And you say laugh, we say laugh. And um, you can also hear it in these two words. It doesn't have to be the first or only uh, vowel in the word. In the southern pronunciation, this is command. But in the northern pronunciation, it's command, command. And um, southern pronunciation of this word is cast. Northern pronunciation is cast. The cast of Brookside came to London. Brookside was an old soap that's not on TV anymore. And it was people from Liverpool and I was just doing that accent. Probably that's really irrelevant to you. You will never see that show, but anyway. You know now. Um, next tip. I don't hear this that often. But when I do, it sounds really, really, really wrong. And I think this tip's generally, generally a good example of how just because we write something one way doesn't mean we say it that way. So in, in English, American English too, W sounding words is the same as the WH sounding words for, for spelling, it actually sounds the same. So we've got two words here, wine and wine. One's spelt with WH, one's just spelt with I, but they sound the same. 
Um, whine is a kind of um, kind of moan or a kind of uh, uh, cry. Sometimes young children whine. Sometimes um, women who are upset about something are said to be whiny. So I don't really say that men whine. That's probably a bit sexist. But anyway, um, yeah, the point is they sound the same but are spelt different differently. So I, I've sometimes hearing people try to make the WH sound like whine or something like that, or in, or in these words, which and which are the same. Some people might say which. And that used to be a feature of British English. If you listen to some speakers of British English um, from a long time ago, like around the 1920s, T.S. Eliot, although he wasn't British, he did acquire a really strange British accent. And when he spoke English, he would make the which sound. And um, that, was a, that was a standard feature of the accent then. But if you say it now, it just sounds a bit weird. So don't be making the wh sound. And here are two uh, commonly spoken words with that wh sound that you shouldn't say. So you should say what without wh. What? What? What do you want? That would be awful. And where? Don't say that. Just say it without the H sound. Let's take a look at the pronunciation of ing word endings. So in just relaxed informal speech, I feel that a lot of dialects don't pronounce the G. So it'd be, it will be like this. I was listening to some music. You don't hear the G there. But if we're making an effort to speak properly and um, with very good enunciation, you would hear the G slightly. It would sound like this. I was listening to a wonderful lecture yesterday. And you hear my G, it's very soft, but it's there. Um, something to say about British uh, English pronunciation is, again, this is a, 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 nor a north a south difference, is that they up there, some some of the accents uh, ring the G, so it's like listening, speaking, I was speaking to him. And um, if that's a feature of your accent, that's a feature of your accent. But in standard English, um, you don't ring it, you don't make an extra G or J sound at the end. So um, the standard way is to make the G sound, reading, but I'm just letting you know that in relaxed and informal speech, many times we don't hear the G. So when we come back, we'll look at the other four rules or tips, tips really, tips and observations about pronunciation. Number five, when we're saying uh, words with two or more syllables, very often the second syllable is not stressed and it's what we call a schwa. So even though all these words have a different spelling from the second syllable, um, they become a schwa. So what some people do is they'll say the word, a good example is uh, this word, they'll say England, um, but actually it sounds like this, England. So the, the vowel changes to a schwa and then it's a, we can, another way to look at it is it becomes a softer sound. So let's, say some of the words, London, not London, London, England, together, not together, together, button, uh, not button, button, cousin. So that's the schwa and um, supposedly the most common sound in the English language. And it's a pretty confusing sound as well because it's always spelt in different ways and doesn't actually sound exactly the same when it moves around into different words. So um, not an easy one to get familiar with. So the main thing to take away from it is that don't put that very big stress on, on all your syllables in the word. It won't sound right. Uh, number six, tip number six. Uh, British English is a non-rhotic accent. This is the sound r. In your language, maybe 
you do that thing where you roll your tongue, which I can't do. I just, I so can't do it. So like how I can't do that sound, you might find it really hard to make that sound without rolling your tongue. Okay, it's hard. Pronunciation is not easy, but you can always work at something and train yourself. So when we make the R sound, the position of the tongue is quite far back in the throat and um, r, r, r. And um, it doesn't have that uh, rhotic sound. And in some dialects, um, for example, in, in Scottish, you do hear it. So I'm going to say the sentence in the Scottish accent. The murderer wore red. Sorry, Scottish people. But um, they put the r sound in. Oh, I, I kind of did it then. Maybe I can do it after all. Uh, but in my accent, um, I would say the murderer wore red. So we don't roll our tongues. And um, that's something, if you want to speak standard British English, you could work on that r if you, if you do it. So if you're Arabic or if you're Spanish, um, Italian as well, you could work on that sound. Number seven now. So this, this is a hard sound. This is, I'm going to have to be honest with you. It's a hard sound for me because I'm, um, I'm, I'm a Londoner and um, I'm from South London and we're not very, we don't like this sound very much. We like to replace it with an F for sound. Um, I'm not too bad making this sound at the beginning of a word. Three, thought, think, but sometimes it's quite hard for me, like in this word. I want to say birthday with an F, F but um, it should be birthday. It's really hard for me. Um, but it's not just hard for me, it's hard for people all over the world. Maybe we should just get rid of the sound. We don't need it anymore. Some people replace it with a D. I've got an Italian student who replaces it with D, so he would say dirty tri. That's not an Italian restaurant, but restaurant, Italian restaurant? Why am I thinking about food? It's not an Italian accent um, because he can't say he replaces it with D. Um, but other, other, other people might replace it with V as well. So um, tip for making the sound is you put your tongue between your uh, teeth and it's a, it's kind of whistly sound um, without the um, f, 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 your lip is more pursed at the top. So you don't want to do that when you're making the th. Um, so yeah, just try it a bit. I'll say the words for you. Three, thumb, thumbs up if you can make that sound. Birthday, thought, think, bath. See, it's, it's hard for me. I'm trying, I'm trying with you. We're learning together today. And um, rule number eight, can't. Oh. That's meant to have that there. A lot of people get confused because sometimes they think, did you say a negative there or did you say the positive? You get really confused because in um, British English, we don't always say the T, we don't always pronounce the T in this word, can't. So it might sound like this, I can't understand you, but it might also sound like this, I can't understand you, I can't understand you. And when I said it the second way, you didn't, you didn't hear the T. And the reason that happens is uh, speech just becomes a little bit more fluid, a little bit more easy to say without the T. Um, but you don't need to be confused because actually the, the opposite of can't is can. And... Um, can um, can is a different vowel. It's a, ah, whereas this vowel is r. Ah, so they would sound completely different. It would be I can understand you. Very different to I can't understand you, or 
I can't understand you. So when, when you're listening out for that negative sometimes, know that we might say it with or without a T. So thank you everybody for watching today. You can do a little bit of extra practice on the Ingvid site for this lesson. And um, if you do like my lesson, please do subscribe because I make lots of different lessons, not just about pronunciation, but all other things about learning English as well that I think will be very educational and very useful for you in your general development as a learner of English or someone who's just trying to improve uh, your English. And um, I'm finished now, so I'm going to go. I'm going to go now, okay? I'll see you later.